So the point of getting this verification is that if it succeeds, you now have a website here. If you go back to the Bing Webmaster link at the very top, uh, it will then show you the screen that I had shown a moment ago with a website thumbnail. Hopefully it shows your website thumbnail. Mine's not verified because this is fake. But then here you'll have all of this information. I'm going to log into an account that does have information so I can break down to you what is this thing that it's showing us. So let me just take a moment to log in to my real account. Yes, the good students. So if you've got an account, a Bing Webmaster account that is set up, you might have something like this. So there's different sites that my company manages. Their data is going to be listed here. Uh, quick overview of info right here. For example, this particular client, within this time period of the last 30 days, it says that it has appeared in search 7% more, but there have been less clicks in that time period. I can of course change the time period because a, de a negative number in these 30 days might not be terrible. If we stretch the time period out to 3 months, 6 months, 12 months, and in those 12 months we've got negative numbers for that whole year, that's pretty bad. For the whole year you've been getting less traffic. For whatever reason this past month it might not have had a lot of traffic. That's not so bad, but if it happens consistently that could be bad. Same thing here. Pages crawled and pages index is related in that when you publish blog posts, it's a new page. It's a new screen for Bing or Google to see. And so it will crawl your site and see new information. If it finds new information, it will add it to the index. The Bing index, the Google index is basically the list of every website that it knows about. So in both of these examples, the numbers are negative for these 30 days for that client. Browsing some other clients over here. This one, it showed up a little bit less on a search result, but it got clicked more times within that time period. And then coupled with, it found a little bit less pages. There wasn't really anything new added to the site, so it didn't add it to the site. Let's see this one over here, same sort of thing increase here, sometimes it's just steady over the time period. Um, this one had again an increase in clicks, it, it, it was shown a little bit less, new content was visited, I mean was shown and so forth. So there's a bunch of examples. I'm going to log in and show more information because then you can click, if you're not looking at a screen that's kind of like this, what you can do is click on the actual client the website, if you click on it, then it will show you all the detail, because what does 7% mean? What does 80% mean? It will show you the hard numbers right here. I'm not going to go through every single screen here, but I'll look at some important ones. Uh, for example, the main dashboard here, it tells you, again, the numbers. Clicks from search, 10% decrease. This period was 193 clicks, last period was 216. So 10% might sound scary, but how many really is that? That's like, you know, 20 people, 20 clicks. How many times has it appeared in search? 3% less, so it was 5,900 times last month, 5,700 times this month. Pages crawled, and uh, we see that. Crawl errors, that's a negative number. There were problems, perhaps, in the site last month, 428 decreased out 309. What problems? We can look at them in another screen. Pages indexed. Some new stuff was published, therefore it added something new to the index. This is just a big overview. Within these screens over here we will see every detail. We'll get to that in a moment. Sitemap. The sitemap was added to the site uh, over a year ago, 
And the cool thing is that whenever a brand new page is added to the site, the sitemap automatically updates and alerts the search engines, there's a new page here. And so 157 links have been added to the to the to the Bing index and it looked at the it looked at the sitemap yesterday. So that's why you want to add a sitemap because then the search engines know your site exists and it's going to check up on it. Is there something new? Is there something new? If there is something new, it's going to add it to the index and therefore you could be found more. If it doesn't if it has to crawl it the slow way without a sitemap, it'll take longer for you to show up. Keywords. We talked about keywords last week, and so here Bing is telling us that these are some of the popular keywords that people are using to find you with. Um, people search for pool kit, and it sold up and showed up 364 times, resulting in four clicks. People were also looking for that keyword. No one clicked on it yet in this time period, and that one there. I can see the full list of all two other 298 keywords, and each one of them has a little dollar symbol because if it's if it sees that one of the popular keywords for example is restaurant well there's millions of restaurants out there and so it says if you want to if you want to rank higher than the other restaurants for that keyword well, no problem it'll cost you 5 cents per click that's what i mentioned last time this is the pay per click you can set a budget of $20 and then your page will rank higher with that keyword then, when someone sees that, appears in search, and they click on it, it will cost them five cents per click. Out of twenty dollars, you know, that's lots of potential clicks. But that's a keyword that is one of the very esoteric. Not a lot of people know what that word is, so it wouldn't be maybe a good investment to use. Maybe I do want to use the keyword Mexican restaurant. That probably is not going to cost five cents a click. It's probably going to cost a dollar a click, five dollars a click. That's that whole game of pay-per-click. Because then my competitor could, anyone can see this, my competitor is seeing that the current is five cents, or average bid is 12 cents, then they're going to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to bid for that click to be worth 20 cents. And now I'm going to be number two. They're going to be number one because they paid more. But again, in this class, we don't deal really with the pay-per-click stuff because this is an ever-moving target. Notice that one, which really doesn't have any clicks, but it's 25 cents a click on average. Even if I'm not going to buy these keywords, it's still great to see what are these keywords that people are searching for so that I can then further use them on social media, in blog posts, etc. We'll look at the importance of inbound links later, but these are links that are pointing to this website. The first, the home page has the most links, 643 from other websites. And then second looks like it's this blog post, The Amazing Maguey Plant. This is a blog post about what is the Maguey Plant. It's a seasoning for the food and it's also the root ingredient for their unique pulque beverage. Pulque is a beverage. So it's the second most linked page. And then we've got history. Of barbacoa third most. The point of knowing that is we can check where's our traffic coming from and what pages are the most popular. If I know a lot of traffic is going to this particular page for example I better make sure that I've got conversion goal possibilities there such as buy now, subscribe, something to capitalize on the traffic that I'm getting to that screen. You've got diagnostic tools. This is the this is the dashboard. There's a bunch of other screens here. Uh, I'll mention a couple. Then we'll do this also for for Google, because this is going to give us traffic, and you're going to see that the, for the same site, it's going to be much more data on Google because Google has got the 60% market share. But still, this is nothing to sneeze at. 100, 193 clicks in a month. Um, from all the other Mexican food restaurants in San Diego. There is a screen. If you want to add the sitemap eventually, it's under the Configure My Site, Sitemaps. Um, but what we want to look at is um, under Configure My Site, there is Connected Pages. If we take a look there, Configure My Site 
connected pages. Uh, I already did it, did it for this site, but on yours probably it shows a long list of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. So it's saying, what's your network? What's your address? Verify. And it'll show you right here some traffic that's coming from these sources. Instagram got us some traffic, appeared in search for Facebook that much. So right there, definitely the Facebook is getting the most views, then Twitter, then Google+, Plus, then Instagram. And it doesn't look like in this time period anything from YouTube. But this is how you also see how well you're being with social media because uh, you can link all of this. Well, the trend is just showing in this time period of the 30 days, over, overall this is, this is what people came from, the, from that site within these days. So YouTube really hasn't worked out, but there's been some sporadic activity from Instagram, and you see Google Plus, Twitter, and Facebook, the big three ones, that's got relatively common amount of traffic. If the trend was, you know, going down, then we would see that we're not being very effective on a certain network. Perhaps we should invest a little bit more time on YouTube, now that I know that, or forget YouTube because we're doing really well on Twitter, let's say. Do we have to connect these to our specific accounts? The way this works is if I've got a Facebook for this business, mm -hmm. I need to have a link from my Facebook to the website. That's how then we verify it. Bing will go check facebook.com slash victor, and it will look for a link there that, that goes to victor.com. That's how okay. we verify it. So we type that in? For, let me show you. For example, Facebook, I would type in here facebook.com, Victor. So I'm typing in my Facebook address right here. To verify it, I need to log into my Facebook and put a link from my Facebook to my website. And that's how then the search engine verifies you have access to that. Can you make that? What's that? So that page just looks a lot different than ours. Right. I think so. Uh, like I said, I think yours automatically just shows a list of them all because I've already done right. it. So I've got stuff from Twitter, but I mean nothing shows, even though I had a Google link. Yeah, it's not going to show until you verify. So you okay. need to fill these in and then click. That's what I'm asking you to do. Fill these in. Your Twitter address. Okay. And then fill it verify. Mm -hmm. If you've got more than one, I would fill them all in and then click verify. It's kind of deceptive. It makes you think, fill in Twitter, click verify. Fill in Facebook, click verify. No, I would fill them all in and then click verify. So at the moment, Google doesn't have anything like this. Um, they'll probably add a version of it eventually. This is one thing that's useful. If you do add your social media here, your connected pages, use connected pages tool to connect related web presences such as your social media to your verified website to see more performance and again um, you can actually even add if you've got an app if you've got a you know if you've got a windows app or an iphone app if you're being ironic and you have myspace you can add that in there also uh, so you can fill in all of these sources of potential traffic <laughs> when you have this set up, then you can be looking at the reports and data page traffic. This will show you more detail compared to the main dashboard right here. It'll tell you page by page each of the page uh, each of the traffic on the home page. 1,000 times that appeared in a Bing search and Yahoo clicked 114 times. The average position was it appeared in first place in the Google result, I mean the Bing results page. This particular one, on average, it appeared on, on result number six. And then we have CTR, 
that's a term that you often hear in this world of SEO, CTR, click-through rate. That's just a number that helps you understand how effective that particular link was. Uh, there's a click-through rate of 10%. When this link appeared, on average, 11% of people clicked on it. Down over here, 1% of people, when that link appeared, people clicked on it. And you're going to be you're going to be a god if you've got like 80% click-through rate, even 50%, even 30%, even 20%. It really depends on the competition that you have. So if you have something under 30, that's fine. If you've got something under 10, that's fine. The higher you get it, the better. You know, if you've got 0% or 1%, some of these are not really going to be that effective. That's a half of a percent. But that's still through global searches. And it seems to be increasing. These numbers are green here. What is Wheat Lakocha? We are seeing that we're getting more traffic to that page. Therefore, it's increasing uh, on the position and such. You can do your keyword research right here. Remember last week we talked about what are the keywords that really define my site. There's a whole tool here, search keywords, to um, to help you with this, to figure out your keywords. And of course the point of this is that then you can invest in the keywords, but you don't have to. Once you've done your research here and seen what is working, you can just figure out that I'm going to use these keywords on Twitter, on, on the blog, etc. without having to pay for it. Like right here, the, the variation of that restaurant's, uh, it's, it's Texcoco, but a variation is Texcoco. If I know that, I could use that misspelling in different aspects of the site to possibly get the, the traffic. Then we've got diagnostics. Uh, we can check the mobile friendliness of the site. We add an address here. It'll tell you how mobile friendly it is. Nowadays you want a mobile friendly site because then more and more traffic is coming from mobile. So I'm not going to go into detail in all of these yet, especially if we don't have a lot of traffic to look at. This is something for you to set up, have it gather traffic for a week, a month, etc. And then when you look at this, this will give you better data. I'm going to move on to Google in a moment, but any general keyword uh, questions on Bing Webmaster? Okay, so we're going to do something very similar over on Google. My document also has a link for you to go check out the Webmaster Tools documentation. Um, so this webmaster tool, specifically it's the search console, that's what the, that link is. All the details straight from Google are found there, it always changes, um, so you keep up to date with it. There's a mention about verifying the site, just like you do with Bing. Sitemaps, you want to do sitemaps, of course, uh, just like Bing. And then we've got the link to webmaster tools, and we've got another one of analytics. The thing is that at the moment Google has two separate logins for two separate pieces of data. Bing has one and all the data is in this one login. But over on Google they separate the webmaster tools, which they now call search console, and then analytics. Webmaster tools slash search console, basically we use it to check the health of our site. Are there broken links? Um, Check the health of your site. Uh, that's to check the health of your site. Are there broken links? Is the server down? Etc. Um, the analytics, that's the one. You're going to get much more in-depth information, even scary amounts, like how long do people stay on my site? Which pages do people go to after going to a certain page? Where does my traffic come from? What's the service provider of the person visiting on their Android phone? 
So all of this data, and for the purpose of that, to do something with that data. If I see that most of my data comes from Android devices, I could put stuff on my website that says, Android users, get this coupon. Um, if I'm seeing that a lot of um, traffic is from tablets, I better make sure that my website is mobile friendly, tablet friendly. We'll see all of this data when we start, when we set it up. What I'm going to do first is, um, we'll say we will go towards setting up analytics first, and then we'll get back to webmaster. So google.com slash analytics, go ahead and open that in your web browser. Google.com analytics, A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S, analytics. This is the big name in SEO statistics. It also needs some setup and verification. And uh, I need to educate myself on this because it's always changing. Recently they created an analytics premium. I don't know the full details what that is. Doesn't sound free, but it's probably going to give you a lot more data than the original analytics did and the original analytics gives you a lot of data so for some amount of money I don't know how much you probably get more data but I need to educate myself in it so at the top right click sign in to plain old Google Analytics the free one we've also got their tag manager which is like Bing's keyword research tool but they've got it in a separate place and adometry I'm not quite sure what that is but it's related to ads Again, paying to get found and all of that. There's so much to learn, but I usually teach the most effective free stuff. So click Google Analytics. And here's going to ask you for your Google address. So if you've got a Gmail account, you can log in with it. If you don't have an account, you can create one. Take a moment to either log in or create an account. We'll take a moment to log in and then we'll proceed. All right, so everyone is at a screen about creating an account. But you say, well, I thought I already have an account. I thought I already created it. They give a, um, a little bit of weird terminology here. Google gives weird terminology. It's asking you, create an account. What that is is this. Notice on my particular account, I have all of these clients. Each of these clients is in its own folder. What you're being asked to do is to create a folder, but they're going to call it an account. So from my point of view, that makes sense. This is the account of that client. This is the account of this client. But you, that you've only got one website, perhaps. Why is it a new account? It's your website. So these folders to organize are an account. And then inside of a folder, we can have multiple properties. There's a property of the main website and a property of the YouTube channel. For this other client, 
we have that account and we have the main website, the blog, the YouTube, and the, um, the art site, and so forth. So that's why we have an account, which is a folder, and then multiple properties. We can even add here an app. If you've got an Android app, you can track the data of how many people download your app and use it and all of that. So those are properties. These are properties in an account. Your screen should look something like this. Are you going to track a website or an app? A website, most likely. What's the account name? The website name. What's that folder name? You can call this whatever you want, like the name of your business. I'm going to have Victor's Amazing Web Design. That's the folder. And I'm only going to have one website, sure. One property. But that's the point of this. What's the folder and what's the specific website? The next line here, you can call it what you want. For example, main website. I'm going to track the data of the main website. Because later on, I could add here my, my YouTube. So I'm going to track the data of the YouTube. That's the name of that website. Main website. Okay, then what's the address? And do you have to have it in HTTP or HTTPS? Be careful here. If your site has security, that's HTTPS. If your site has that little lock when someone logs in or buys a product or whatever, then that's the HTTPS version and you want to select it. This is where then you put in your web address. Victor's amazing web design .com, biz, let's say. So it's not necessary. Uh, you can be complete or not. It, it, it'll work just fine. Industry category. There's uh, several to choose from and try to pick the best one. This is simply for it to gather or to show you the data as best as possible. It, they're all going to get, this is going to gather all the data. But to show it to you might be more effective if you're in real estate, that it'll show you your data a certain way. If you don't know which one you really fit into or don't want to specify, you can put other. That will basically show you everything. And you can see everything whenever you want, but these will just focus to give you the data in a certain way. I'm going to select other. Time zone should be set properly. If not, you can change that. This will gather a lot of data. And it's saying here, would you like to share this data with other Google products? And this is optional. You don't have to do this, although they're telling you recommended. So Google products and services, would you like this data to also be accessible from your other Google accounts? Like when we do Google Webmaster Tools. Remember, there's two different ones, Webmaster Tools and Analytics. So yes or no? Would you like to provide anonymous information to benchmark the, the, the site and other things? Yes or no? If you end up calling or contacting Google Tech Support, do you want them to see your data? Yes or no? And would you like one of their marketing specialists, one of their salespeople, to see your data? Yes or no? I'm going to recommend to turn them all off. It's no big deal if you have them on or off. If you need one of these on at a certain point, like you need to contact the tech support people, they'll turn it on at that moment. It doesn't matter. If you simply want it always on, that's fine too. Your data will easily transfer between the accounts. And then if you're wary, you can read Learn How Google Safeguards Your Data. You can have a hundred accounts. Click Get Tracking ID. There's this huge terms of service that basically you agree to if you click accept. And um, I haven't read it very recently, but it's just going to say, you know, you're not going to abuse the system. You're not going to try to hack into the system. Everything's confidential, etc. They're indemnified, etc. If you 
don't agree with it, click I don't, but then you can't use the system. So click accept. And then you get a screen here. This is your tracking ID and then your code. Some properties, like YouTube, only need your tracking ID number. Over on YouTube, if I log into my YouTube and go to my settings, it asks for your Google Analytics tracking ID. So I provide this, and then that links YouTube with analytics so I can check the data. Most sites are going to require this, this chunk of code here that gets added to your site. And again, this is going to vary to different people, uh, depending on your website. And it says, to get all the benefits, copy and paste this code into every web page you want to track. So not just the home page, the about page, the product page, etc. And if you're using a website builder like WordPress, the WordPress.org version, you copy this into your code, and the template will automatically copy this to all of your pages even like the GoDaddy Builder. If you paste that into the head code, it'll copy it to all your pages. And notice there's no button here then that says verify. It takes about 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, once you've pasted this code to your site, it will automatically then start to check if the connection is being made, and then it'll start to gather the data. Pretty much, exactly. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do the individual help in a moment again for your particular needs. But the short answer, yes, you're gonna paste this into the into the head section of your main template so that then it could get shared to all your pages. But we'll see how to do that individually in a moment. Um, we'll, we're gonna take a moment to do that for everyone in a moment, but. I want to mention, I want to finish a few things here first, because this is a very powerful, full-featured software for free, and it's kind of hard to get around with. Let me show you this. I'm going to show you where to get back to this in a moment, because we're going to leave this screen. At the top, we've got Home, Reporting, Customization, Admin. There's so much to look at, we can customize it. But let's click on Home. That takes you back to all your accounts, all your folders, and you probably have one. There's mine right there, Victor's Amazing Web Design. If you click the folder, it opens up to show you there's my main website, all of its data. I can add, and I'll show you how in a moment, I can add more properties. I can set up a property to only track the shopping cart, or to track the YouTube page, or the Facebook, and so forth. And I'm going to I'm going to see my data, we'll see it in a moment, in the reporting. We won't go there yet. Let's go to Admin. And you get these three columns. Which account are we dealing with? With some settings. What property? And then what view? So on my example, because I work with multiple clients, multiple accounts, they're listed here. I want to go look at the data of this one or that one. Uh, under account settings, that's where. And then on the first column of account, you can click on account settings. This is what we selected a little while ago, isn't it? So if we wanted to actually set this up, we can. We've got user management. What it's, what's cool about this under user management is I can add multiple people to the company to look at this data. Um, but you have to be careful because... Oh, let me do this. So if you look at account settings, you click that little back button on the top there, it takes you back to the three columns. Each one of these columns has user management. If I add someone else at this level, they will be able to see all 
properties of the site and every screen of information. And if, for example, I have multiple properties here, I have the YouTube and the Facebook and the home page, they would be able to see all of that data. That may be too much data. So on the next level here, under property, this is where it would show main site, Facebook, YouTube, etc. From that level, I can choose user management and give someone access to only view the, the Facebook data, for example. And then even deeper, we've got a view. If I set up views, we're going to see a bunch of charts. I could set up a chart with a certain amount of data, and it'll show up here, and then I can give someone access to only that chart of only that website. So most of you won't need to really deal with user management, but if there's multiple people in your company that need to know this, this is how you do that. Don't worry about these other ones here. You can explore them on your own. If you'd like to delete an account that no longer exists, you can go to Trash Can and delete that. On the second column, property, um, we'll look at tracking info, tracking code. That takes you back to the code. So if you ever need to get back to this, it's in the second column, the property column, and it's under tracking info, tracking code. What's useful to do here is after you copy and paste this to your site, you want to visit it in a day or two, back on this screen, and eventually that will tell you right here, status, no data received. Eventually that will say, active, no data received, if you don't have traffic. Or it will say, active, receiving data, once it's fully set up. There's a bunch of other screens here that we won't really get into because we'll talk about the important ones. If you've also got an AdWords account, you can link that. That's where you're going to pay for those keywords like we saw at Bing. AdSense is related to that, but that's more about making advertisement pop up on other people's websites. Have you seen that? You visit a website and ads pop up. You can create that here and also make money off of that. Ad exchange, etc. So you can, you can look at that on your own. I'm going to click this back arrow and now on the third column, again, lots of stuff to look at, but let me mention one that I really recommend on the third column, Views, Goals. Click on Goals. Conversion goals, basically. This is how you can set goals uh, to see how effective something is happening. We have New Goal, Import from Gallery. I'll look at Import in a moment. But if you click on New Goal, would you like to use a template or custom? I'm going to recommend at the moment custom. I'll explain what this is in a moment. Continue. So let's say I've got a goal. Cupcake sales, if I've got a bakery. What's the thing I'm trying to accomplish? I'm trying to sell cupcakes. So that's the name of this goal, and I think I can create like 20. Uh, I can save it in this group. Okay, how do we how do we confirm that we've made a sale? How do we confirm a conversion? This is going to depend. We've got different types: destination, duration, pages, and events. If a person ever reaches the thanks page, that means they went through the catalog, they went through the shop. They paid for it and they went to thank you. So that final page of thank you can only be reached when something has been sold. So if I select that on the next screen, I can select what's that goal page. Let's say I'm trying to do here newsletter signups. I have a page that says sign up for the newsletter. And then I have a page that says thank you for signing up for the newsletter. That's how I can confirm that this goal has been reached. They reached that thanks screen. What if, I, what if I engage in landing pages? What if I engage in marketing with landing pages? Basically, a landing page is a page that I create to direct traffic to. 
It's not usually findable through the main menu. It's a page that's hidden that the only way to get to it is, let's say, a tweet sale now. Click here. And that link goes to a landing page on my site. And so I can have here Twitter sign up campaign. I have a page, a landing page that I created on my WordPress site called Twitter sign up. .html. And when people reach that page, at least I'm able to confirm that people have reached the page. We've got other ones. Duration. How long someone spends on in time. How many pages did they visit. Because maybe that Twitter sign-up page, I direct them to, I direct them to a, a, a landing page and they have to go through step one, two, and three. So I could say they visited those three pages and that was a goal. I reached it. Or did they play a video and such? So this can be complex but very valuable. I'll show an example in a moment. Let's say I've got destination, continue. And here I can say, okay, equals to another logic. But I'm going to say, when a person goes to victor.com, sign up slash thinks dot html, that means that a person went through my sign up process and they signed up and they got the thanks. And if they reach this point, conversion achieved. I can attach a monetary value that every time they reach there, that's like a dollar. And do I want to create a funnel in that they have to come from this page to this page to this page? Say, uh, no, not in this case. And then if I save it, so you don't have to save any of this, you can cancel it. That's the concept of these goals, and I think these are very valuable because they, they help you really understand, did I accomplish this? Did this work? I'm going to cancel all of this. But again, this is found inside of the third column. Select your account, and then under View, Goals. And if you get back to Goals, we created one from scratch. You can import a goal that other people have created that already has these things filled in, and you just fill in your own information. Let's check that one out. If you go back to Goals, the main level of Goals, instead of New Goal, click Import from Gallery. What kind of goal am I trying to reach in commerce? Conversion, acquisitions, which is traffic. I'm saying, show them all to me. I'm trying to, oh, is my contact form working? Are people submitting to my contact form? Someone created this. It's got four and a half stars. It's got 11,000 users of it. Amu, Amuad for Osram created it gave it away for free, and I can click Import. And that'll fill in a bunch of screens for me, which then I can fill in with my details. So this could be a way to help me to help me uh, get up and running with these goals. And then I can go in and edit to customize it. Let's go over to your reporting screen. You've got Home Reporting Customization Admin. I'm going to switch over actually to a client that has traffic just to show you what this should look like. You can define a time period. This is November to December, so this is one month. I can then instead change that for more time. Again, kind of like the stock market. You know, day to day, oh, this company lost money in the stock market. Week to week, it lost money. But month to month, it made money. Year to year, it made money. Decade to decade, it made money. Same thing with analytics. If you're only focusing on one month and it's a terrible month, that was just a terrible month. But if you focus on that whole year, then it was a terrible year. So 
the longer you have this set up, the more data it'll give you. It won't go back in time to tell you what happened two months ago. As soon as you set this up, it'll start to gather data. You'll see some sort of chart of the number of hits. This is in the past month what happened. So there's a big spike right there near Thanksgiving. This is a restaurant. You're going to see these various data points. Sessions, users, and page views are related. Users are the number of people that visited your site. So 6,700 in this past month. And that created a session. You can hover over these little headers to explain. A session is the period of time a user actively engaged with your website. So someone visits your site and clicks on stuff, they count it as a session. Because if someone just went to this main site and didn't do anything, they don't quite count it. What was the point? Nothing happened. So this may be higher or lower. But these number of people visited the site and they count it as these number of sessions and then a person might have visited more than one page, so that's why page views is often much higher. 6,000 people looked at approximately two pages at a time, 14,000 page views. They spent approximately 1 minute 40 seconds while they were on the site and had a bounce rate of 64.92. These numbers, depending on your website, could be fine, great, or terrible depending on your website. This is a restaurant. In under two minutes, people accomplish what they need to accomplish on that website, which would be simply, are you open? What's on the menu? Order now. If people are coming to order now, and they do it quickly, that's good. I mean, they leave. So that number might be okay for this client. It might be terrible for a writer. A writer that is blogging you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to read very much on the blog in under two minutes. So the blogger, that number might be terrible for them. They're not reading my stuff. Related to that is the bounce rate. Someone visits a page and doesn't really look at anything, any other page and leaves. So this again could be bad or good or terrible or neutral in that what if people have the buy now screen bookmarked in their web browser and they just go to that page, buy their product, and leave. That would contribute to a high bounce rate. It might not be so bad for this particular client. Again, for the writer, that might be terrible. They're not spending enough time on my site. They only read one thing and they left. They didn't read my other great seven other posts. And then new sessions, how many new users are coming to the site. Are you going to be able to maintain your business on new customers or on existing customers or a mixture? So it depends again on your site. And I won't go through every screen, but here you can see what's the number one language, what country are they coming from, and city, web browser, operating system. This is showing more traffic is coming from Los Angeles than San Diego. This client has uh, a location in San Diego and Los Angeles, and they opened it in about a year and a half ago. In a year and a half, traffic from LA has surpassed traffic from San Diego. Traffic from Mexico City also. Not set. Could be someone is uh, in private mode, you know, incognito. But our web browsers give away so much information that we don't even know about every time we simply visit websites, and Google Analytics tells us that info. So look at this, these popular cities. You can look at uh, operating system. The number one operating system that visits this website, Android. Number two, iPhone. IOS number three, Windows computers. Number four, Mac computers. Number five, Windows computers. Chrome OS. So the largest traffic combined is mobile. 36 and 28 percent. And only a quarter from the traditional desktop. And a little bit more than a quarter. Yes? Duplicate information, so it's the same 
It does. It does. So okay. if if the same if that one same BlackBerry user came back five times, it does duplicate. Okay. It's not for IP, it's it is based on IP number. Uh, that's how it knows. What's that? Yeah, it does count it. So in a, in that's why it also mentions up here: Are these new or 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 repeat people? Yeah, every everything is a hit. Even if I press refresh ten times on my browser, I just got ten hits, ten worthless hits. And then you can further go on to see the operating systems and the screen resolution of mobile devices. So it looks like the highest percentage of people visiting the site are with with phones that are not that high quality. Three hundred and sixty by six hundred and forty is pretty. It's kind kind of old ish. It's not even HD. None of these. Right here, that the tenth most popular one is an HD quality phone. You know that the most newer phones. So for some reason, most traffic is coming from middle to lower end mobile devices. The reason that that might be important is how slow or fast is the site. If my site is really slow for the people coming on the older devices, they're going to leave the site. It's not. It's not good uh, speed. And somewhere here, it'll also tell you how fast your site is. That's all this information on all of these screens here. Uh, I'm not going to get a chance to really look at them all, but I will mention um, next week, now that we've got this set up, we'll go into detail of a couple more screens here that I think are important. Uh, but notice here, conversions. You might not have conversions because you didn't create conversion goals. But if you have conversions, you'll be able to see in overall this particular client has this conversion set up about reservations. If someone went to the reservation screen, 82 completions within this month, so 82 reservations went to that page. There's no monetary value assigned, but if we had set in a value there, it would say those 82 conversions uh, earned you $100. So then that helps us with creating landing pages and such that can be more effective. We need to completions, that's a 0 0.99 conversion rate, which is fine. Zero would be worse, of course. But this would be better, more abandonment. People didn't come to this page and say too hard and leave. They actually did it. And that's why you want to do conversions. So we're, we're running out of time, but if you didn't get a chance to add your code, we're going to have lab time soon. And then also what you're going to need to do, you're, what you're going to try on your own, we did Bing together, and that's, that's like two products in one, three products in one. Google separates them into different sites. We did analytics for all of the data. We didn't do webmaster tools yet, but those are kind of both together in Bing. And uh, so we did this one together. On your own, either here or at home, whatever, you want to go to that address and set up your webmaster tool. It's a different screen, different data. Most of the time, you're going to be spending your time on analytics. But webmaster, also known as Search Console, is still very useful because this will alert you to problems in your site that Google detects. Do you have malware? Are there broken links? Is the server down? So you can do that on your own. I'll take the some. Is the webmaster one. I remember now you have to put www in the address. I forgot to change that on my link, but put www. It's kind of funny that one of the biggest websites in the world doesn't have that automatic redirect. But try www and then it should go. Sometimes even the big players make mistakes. Um, about a couple of months ago, I read a news article that for a couple of hours, Google.com lost their Google.com domain. Someone else bought it for like two hours. But it was a previous Google employee that had access and all of that. And for fun, even though I wouldn't have done it because you're obviously going to get arrested, uh, he saw that the Google domain was about to expire this year. 
and he was fast enough to go in and claim it and he actually bought it for twelve dollars oh for like two hours then he alerted the people and then they said oh sorry cancel it and then they got it back but uh, because that's when then you're gonna get the cops at your door even if you have a case for it um, so we're going to end the main lecture at this point. Um, you can try the webmaster tools on your own. Any general questions on things we've talked about today? Yes. So on the business end of things, how do you charge a client when you're doing this SEO stuff? I mean, when you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah, this is, this is such a... Uh, you know, this is shifting sands. What I said on the first day of class was, if you're gonna hire an SEO company and they're gonna tell you you're gonna be number one in two months don't hire them because no company should be promising a a result in a timetable uh, two months one month one year it depends on the website it depends on the traffic and competition so um, to actually charge for it and such, it, it all couples with the experience of the company providing the service. If they're starting off, um, it's not unreasonable to be charging $20 an hour to set all of this up and manage it and so forth. Or a lump sum, let's say for you know $500 a month we're gonna manage this stuff you know like a, a retainer for $500 we're gonna use that budget to figure out everything we need to do we're out of $500 okay we wait for next month or we refill $500 there's such a range my company usually when we deal with com customers if we're doing something hourly we're usually charging $100 an hour because we have the experience and the and, and the portfolio to show for it you know, as a, and we could do it faster and possibly more effectively. But we never say we're going to get this done and you're going to be on the first page of results in two weeks or one month or three months. We say we're going to try all that we can. Here's the strategies we're going to use and we're going to check in every month. How are we doing? And in the long term, we're going to get there. And you have to draw the passwords to all of their accounts? Yeah, in the contract that we sign, we do request all relevant passwords. We, of course, keep their passwords safe. And uh, if they request us to delete passwords or whatever, and we do so, of course, but the most effective way is for us to have their passwords because it's going to be annoying for us to log in. What's the password? We call them up, ask for the text, etc. But uh, in the contract, we say we keep it confidential. Um, anything that we create for them, we will give them full access to and rights to all their content because there's plenty of companies out there that really want to lock you down into working with them. They don't give you the passwords. They say, call us up and we'll do it. Um, we created these photos and you can use them on your site, but you broke our contract and leaving us, okay, we want our photos back. There's plenty of companies out there that will be very stingy and protective. We are the opposite. Anything we create for them, it's theirs. We give them all their passwords. Many, most companies are like that. I'm just saying, you know, the most negative ones. But I do have people coming all the time to my classes that says, I don't know my password. I have to ask my web guy, and he's not available, and he's angry all the time, and what do I do? Worst case scenario, you get a new web designer, and you start over. Worst case scenario. You can also be like, hey, I know some lawyers. Maybe they want to meet you. So, um, yeah. With the sites that you manage, do you charge them a hosting fee or they do it for $7 themselves? We do it with them, but they get charged directly from GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever. There, There is the reseller plan and such, but I think it's more trouble than it's worth because you could make money off of hosting sites for people. I think it's too much trouble because then you become tech support in that aspect. So we usually recommend that we, we, we walk them through the process over their shoulder on Bluehost or whatever, and they're going to pay Bluehost directly and get tech support for that stuff directly. Any other general questions? So we're all going to add a site again that what we did earlier? Exactly. On the Webmaster Google Search Console, you're going to add a site, go through that process, and it'll be very similar to Bing. You're going to have to add that code or upload that file and then you will have your webmaster set up through Google.
So we're going to end the main lecture at this point, have a little lab time if you need individual help until 9.30, and we'll do it again next week. I've got some other handouts and activities for you next week, and if you were new, what I said previously was, if you would like, on the last day of class, we can put your site up on the board here, and I will analyze it for free in the most accurate, meanest way possible, so that you see what you've done right and what you've done wrong, and that'll be on the last day of class. Optional.